Hey everyone, welcome to this lesson. So for this video, we're gonna be creating a simple Python program right now. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna be using idle for this tutorial. So if you're on Mac, the way you do it is you open up your terminal and type in idle3. And that should bring up the idle interactive shell um, on your computer. So if you want to use any other software, like for example, there is an IDE called PyCharm, or you want to use the Anaconda Navigator, specifically the Jupyter Notebook, if you want to type code in that way, you can use anything you want, just as long as you're able to follow along and also execute the program. So the um, program we're gonna be creating in this video is going to be a simple program that says hello world and asks for your name, and then it will take in user input, and then it will also ask what the current year is, and then it will also say what the next year is gonna be, and then it will ask you the year that you were born in, and then it will say that you are you are this current age or that you will be that age this year. So that's kind of a brief overview of how this program is gonna be like. I'm just gonna tell you in advance so that when we type in the code, you'll know what kind of program we are gonna create. All right, so let's get started. Um, over here in idle, click on file, new file, and that should bring up a new file editor window. And we're gonna enter in the following code and I will go step by step in explaining in detail right after we finish typing everything in. So the first thing we're gonna do is say print hello world, a backslash lowercase n, what is your name? my name equals input and then print it is nice to meet you plus my name and then as, as I said earlier print what is the current year and then another one the year equals input and then print the next year will be string int the year plus one, two closing brackets, and then next, print backslash n, what year were you born? And then we're gonna do one more um, user input, this time we're gonna call it birth year. And then here's the last line, it's gonna be the longest one, we print, you will be, or already are um, plus string um, bracket int the year close bracket minus int then birth year two close in brackets plus and then this year and then we're gonna have a pound sign that says the final line. Now in idle, before you can run a program, you first have to save the file before you can run it. So you can do, if you're on a Mac, Command S, or if you're in Windows, Control S, or just simply click on File and Save. Alright, so I'm just gonna call this simple program.py. Okay, so once you've got that saved, you can now run the program. So now I will say, hello world, what is your name? So let me go ahead and type in my name, it's Raphael. It will say, it is nice to meet you, Raphael. What is the current year? Well, it's December 2023, so I'll just type in that year. It will say, the next year will be 2024. What year were you born? Well, I'm going to put in my birth year. And it will say, you will be, or already are, your current age this year. All right, so let's go ahead and break down this program. So, okay, so this is the program that we wrote earlier. And if you've noticed, I have left out the last line for now because that line is extremely long and it won't fit in the zoomed in portion of this video. So I'll make sure to cover that line, so don't worry. I'll just first get through these um, couple lines here. So Python programs start at the top and move down. So obviously, as we demonstrated earlier, the first thing that was called was the print function on top that says hello world backslash n what is your name 
Now, if you notice when we called the program, these two lines were separate, despite the fact that they're both in the same function. Well, that is because of this backslash n that I included in the middle. Basically what that does is it puts down whatever's on the right side of that will be put down into a new line. It will not show up on the string. Like, I mean, it will show up when you're coding, but on the actual execution itself, it won't show. It will just simply put that down to a new line. So there's, there are other ways that you can do that. Like for example, I'm showing you on screen right now, you can also do two separate print functions and they will achieve the same task. Now, I made sure to show this because I wanted to just show that there are multiple ways that you can achieve the same result. Now, if you want it to be like, if you want it to be like that, like more simple, you can also do that as well. And then as for functions, for example, I was mentioning functions earlier. Well, you can basically think of functions as containing blocks of code aimed to accomplish a certain task. Now, the ones that we used here, like the print function and the input function, spe specifically these, they are built in functions in Python. Now, there are a lot of different built in functions, but for this program, we're only going to be focusing on a few of them. So the print function will take in um, an, any string and it will print it out to the um, viewer. So it will print out anything that you typed in that string, which are between the two quotation marks. And then the input function will take in user input, like I demonstrated earlier when I put in my name and the years. So that's the same thing that we did over here on the rest of them. So it will say, what is the current year? And then took in user input. And then the third line, which says, it is nice to meet you. And then we printed out whatever the user input was. So whatever you typed in the previous instruction, that is what will print out in the third line. I will demonstrate that again when I run the program a second time. And you might have noticed that over here, we also have a backslash n on the line that says, what year were you born? Well, if you noticed when you ran the program, there was a blank line that separated that section from the rest of it. So we just wanted to uh, do that just to make sure that the line that comes next wouldn't be lumped in with the rest of the program. It's a bit of like you're grouping them together. So that is the reason why we added that, that in over there as well. And then for this line over here, where it says the next year will be string int the year plus one, if you notice, we actually converted data types as well. So let's break this down. So int um, the year, which is right inside that um, parentheses, it will convert the value that was stored in the variable the year that we took in a user input, it will convert that into an integer as represented by int over there. So it will assume basically that the year was initially a string or any other numerical type and it will convert that into an integer. So then now that it's been converted to an integer, you can actually add one to that integer. So then we are able to print that out as a string. And you'll, if you notice, we actually also did that same thing in the very last line, which I will now get to. All right, so here we are back in idle and we're gonna cover the last line as I promised earlier. So if you notice what we did was we again converted data types. This time we did it twice. And what we did was take the user input for whatever they put for the year, in this case, the current year, convert that to an integer. And then we did the same thing for the birth year. And then we had the, the birth year subtracted from the current year to get the user's age. So that is what we did for this last line. And the last thing I want to do is talk about this, this one with a hashtag. And in Python, that is simply called a comment. Now, Python ignores comments and you can use comments for a lot of things, like perhaps as a reminder or a label for what a particular um, line of code does or a portion of what the code does. And you can put as much as you want to. There's really, it really doesn't matter how much comments you put because Python will only um, focus on the others. It will ignore comments altogether. And now, before I show you what the next part, I just want to demonstrate like earlier when I talked about how there are multiple ways that you can do this. So I'm going to go in and first put comment that one out initially. And I am going to 
um do hello world i'm gonna i'm gonna demonstrate how to do it with two separate functions so that will just simply give out the same result if i go in and run it and as you can see it's pretty much the exact same like it was the rich the first time so it doesn't matter which one you pick but for me i would rather pick the first one because it's it will take up only one line instead of two lines but if you feel like the second option is a lot um, less confusing well just do that for now so what i wanted to show you let me go ahead and first stop that program then what i wanted to show you next is this website called pythontutor.com and this is a nice website that will show you how your python program will be executed step by step it's a nice place to really delve deeper into anything like let's say um you're you're trying to fix a problem but you're not sure exactly what is causing it or or you maybe you have the opposite problem where it works but you're confused as to how it got there step by step well this website will take you through that and i'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate it right now so i'm gonna click start coding online now in python and then you scroll down and let's go ahead and copy and paste the code that we put in earlier in idle so once that's down you can click on this button right here visualize execution and the way you do this is the the line that is next to execute will be red and whatever had just finished executing is going to be the light green one or the just kind of faded green arrow right here so let's go ahead and click next as you can see it says that this line has finished executing as seen by that green arrow and it will say hello world what is your name as exactly as intended and then let's go ahead and type in user input or let's type in any fake name actually just to be fun so as you can see it's taking it um step by step like i was saying earlier now this will also happen for um this will happen as well if you are if your program is complicated that will be extremely helpful so now let's go click next again and then it will say it's nice to meet you blah 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 whatever you put down and then let's type in the current year let's do 2030 to be fun for a change click submit and then click next again and then it will say that the next year will be 2031 <laughs> as if and the next one the user input let's see the birth year let's do 2001 and click on next and it will it will say that you are 29 or you already are 29 this year if you are um if it's going to be 2001 is your birth year and then you put that the year was 2030 well yeah definitely will be 29 so yeah that's what you can do and then what you can also do is you can actually control the slider here to really go back to a certain step and really um check in detail what happened so i i just think that this site will be nice to um use so i wanted to leave that down in the video description but we won't use the site too often but i just thought it'd be nice for you to know so that's it for this lesson that's that's your first python program and we'll proceed in the next lesson